This is Senior Pastor Larry McCord, pastor of New Birth Christian Ministries, Incorporated, located on Long Island, New York, reaching out to you wherever you may hear the sound of my voice, sending out the Word of God. I know many of you are troubled today, but you don't need to be afraid because you're God's property. And he said, no weapon formed against you will prosper. This is taken from Isaiah 54, verse 17. The only thing you can rely on is the word of God. Tune in and listen to New Birth Christian Ministries on YouTube channel. I look forward to seeing you. Greetings in the name of Jesus. The topic today was, remember you're not alone on this journey. The thing I like about that is that's true for every single one of us in here and those that are not. Do you know your life is a journey? Not because you say so, not because I say so, but it is. And I'm going to give you a little example. I'm off the topic, but I'm on the topic. Do you ever notice that everybody we know came into this world about this big, not able to walk, talk, or feed themselves? Now, when you first come into the world this big and you can't walk, talk, or feed yourself, you can't get up and go to the refrigerator and get a soda. You can't go get no uh, ice cream. You can't get no baby food. And even if you could get up and walk. You don't know how to drive. How would you go to the supermarket? You wouldn't have a license. Your foot wouldn't fit the steering wheel. So that means God has to put somebody to look out for you, yes or no. Now notice everybody don't get the same person, but everybody sitting in this room made it to be big, right? We didn't get the same person, but we all made it to be big, right? So there must be a common denominator that he does give mothers. Because unless your mother fed you some bad food and you died, you wouldn't be here, right? So there must be a common denominator, right? He must give mothers some kind of knowledge. Don't give that kid that food that sat out for, for a week. So get, get some new food, whether you go to the store or go to the refrigerator, get some new food and give them some better food. Think about that. How do they all know what to do? Now, some countries, you probably got to go out in the woods and get the food. In America, you go to supermarkets. But in America, you need money, don't you? So that means a person who is in America got to make some money to go buy that food, right? But a person living in the, not Nigeria, the jungles of Africa, have to go out there and watch out for the jaguar, the lion, the leopard, the Komodo dragon, whatever it is, and get some food. Everybody in different places have to do a different way of getting the same thing so they could raise their children, yes or no? Yes. Now, you know what people often forget? The reason that works is because God was the orchestrator and the master of the plan. So it doesn't matter where you are. Doesn't matter what you got to do. God fixed it so it would work. Isn't that interesting? And whether you white, brown, red, or black, everybody got to do the same thing to raise your. So what was the title again? You ain't on this journey alone, are you? Somebody thought of a way for this journey to work. Notice how I took something that had nothing to do with the sermon to show you that the master was in charge. He was the chief architect. So tell me this. How come some people don't believe in God? That's weird, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You are so smart that everything that happened to you was under your control. Well, if that's the case, when you give a picnic on whatever day it might be your birthday or whatever day, you want to go, like she taking a trip, you know, does she control whether or not it rains where she going? You might be going to the beach. It might rain like cats and dogs, right? 
Do you are you in control of that? No. Is the weatherman in charge? No. No. All he could do is say it's gonna rain tomorrow. So then why is it when everything is good, we take credit? Tell me. Watch this. Daniel catches two or three touchdowns in the same game. Watch, because I threw the ball down. I had nothing to do with that fact that he was born with two hands, two, two feet, and, and super fast. Well, yes, I had something to do with that. But I had nothing to do with the fact that one leg wasn't short enough. You ever notice how when it's good, people are right there for the credit? Am I wrong? Let you or you do something good. The parents stick their chest out. I guarantee you they do. If you think I'm joking, I'm going to take some pictures and I'm going to show you. <laughs> but when it's not good, they say, I don't know what happened. Am I wrong? No. I don't know where they get that from. You ever heard them say that? <laughs> they don't know where they got that from. So we take the credit when it's good. But when it ain't good, we don't know what happened. Devil is a liar. We shouldn't know. Because they told me if you want a tree to be bent, bend it when it's young. So parents that do everything for you, they're doing you a disservice. Because that's not how the world works. We got to teach you how to be, like my grandmother taught me, able to pull the plow. Able to do the work and not look for people to give us everything. So we got to teach you how to be a strong tree because the right tree, when the song comes, it ends down. But after the storm is over, it goes right back up. But those trees that are rigid, they step in the wind. Let me get to the main sermon that I'm supposed to be preaching on. But I learned something one day. I said, if the spirit tells you to go left, go left. If the spirit tell you to go right, go right. Because he know why he's doing what he's doing. I only work for God. I ain't God. I work for him. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, many people are ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know how you know? I preach in season and out of season. I'm not ashamed to say I'm a Christian. I'm not ashamed to say I'm saved. Woo! Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Because I noticed somebody told me one day, said, well, I go to a school and they got all different denominations. I don't want to offend nobody. I don't care who get offended. I am a son of, of, of God. And I worship Jesus Christ. And if you don't like that, it's too, too bad for you. But I am not ashamed. When a bullet came to kill me, Jesus saved me. Now, if you serve somebody else, good for you. But I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Matthew 8, 23 to 27. We're going to talk about Jesus. Jesus calms the storm. Then he got into the boat with his disciples and they followed. They followed him. Suddenly a furious storm came up on the lake so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. Notice that. Jesus was sleeping. Now, the other disciples obviously awake. The disciples went and woke him up saying, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. Oh, Lord, have mercy. You know how many times I've seen people scream and yell when things get rough? I just look at them. They say, ain't you nervous? <laughs> See, the good thing about God is if when he brings you to more than once, more than twice, more than three times, you realize this ain't nothing but a bump. In the road. And there's nobody better bump in the road. You want to know why? You see, the first time, you might be scared. Second time, you say, whoa. Third time, you say, mm, I'm not leaving here before it's, it's my time. I don't care what you're doing. You can threaten me with a this or that or the other. I know in whom I believe. When it's my time, I'm going. Not a second sooner. But you see, most people look at the wind. They look at the waves. They look at the boat. They look at the boat over here and the waves up there. And they say, 
Oh, Lord, look at all the water that just came in. We're going to sink. We're going to die. We're going to drown. Think about it. Anybody that has any situation in their life, Oh, I don't know how I'm going to pay this tuition. I don't know how I'm going to pay this mortgage. I don't know. You don't need to know. Call on Jesus. Because his answer is the only answer. Somebody might say, oh, but it's what the bank say. It's what the mortgage company say. It's what the, uh, what's the name of the people? Uh, 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 the people that give you the money. Financial aid say. <laughs> oh, hallelujah, Jesus. I came to New York with $20. <laughs> Trying to go to college. Jeez. Somebody say, How you gonna do that? I don't know. I said, Lord, send me here. He's gonna take care. Mm, hallelujah, Jesus. I know where to put my trust. If you don't know, you better listen. Because not only did I educate myself, I put four kids. To all kinds of school, I got two doctors. Hallelujah, Jesus. You see, you can put your trust in yourself. You can put your trust in man. But I put my trust in Jesus. And he brought me through. Now, you can do what you want. Somebody said to me, well, you know, I don't understand how all that happened. I say, you I put my trust in Jesus. Somebody said to me, how many schools did you go to? I said, why? You want to count? They said, didn't that cost a lot of money? I said, yes, it did. Do you have any loans now? No, I don't. You see, the problem with man is man tries to figure out everything. I ain't got to figure out but one thing. Do I line up with Jesus Christ? Because when I lined up with Jesus Christ, I became the fastest black runner in a high school boy in America. And my son did too. You see, the problem is we think we know every answer. But I ain't got to know but one answer. That answer is, Lord, do you want me to serve you? And if you say, go, I will go. Because, see, you don't serve God for what he gives you. You serve God for eternal salvation. We all going to leave this place one day. I want to make it into heaven. But a lot of people have the foolish idea that God won't bless you in the gap. Now, watch the story. Lord, save us. We're going to drown. He replied, you have little faith. Why are you so afraid? Then he got up and he rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was calm. Understand the God we serve has all the power. The men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and waves obey him. That's the kind of person we serve. That's why we're here, because we're giving him his service. You know, I run across people all the time that say, I don't need to go to church to serve God and to praise him. Well, last time I look, when I go to school, I got to go to the building. I don't know why, but I do. I got to go to the class. I got to go to the class. I got to go to the school building. If I'm going to college, I got to go to the college building. Not during the pandemic, they had this, you know, dial it in and stuff. That was for health and safety reasons. But most times when you go to a class, you got to go to the Am I wrong? The teacher's in there and the students are in there. And if I want to get what they're telling me I need, got to go there too. Oh, about jobs. Let's see. Let's say I'm working at uh, whatever the, one of these stores are. And uh, I'm a cashier at the store down here. Don't I have to go? To, 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 to ring the people up? Don't I? I work for uh, the bus company. Don't I have to go to the bus garage and get a bus and drive it? So the only thing I don't have to do to serve God is just don't go to church. But I got to do everything else. 
Notice how when people tell you something that don't make no sense, you entertain foolishness. I noticed that one day. Somebody was talking foolishness, and my son said, well, I can't say nothing because, you know, different people have different beliefs. Uh, I say, okay, okay, okay. I say, but let me see if I got this right. Somebody tell me something stupid. I got to agree with that. I said, well, that's your opinion, okay? That's your opinion. Because the last time I looked, if you wanted to take care of a family in New York, I'm talking New York, it's expensive. So if you're a man, a young man, and you think that one day you're going to have a family, but you don't get an education, how's that going to work? What kind of job are you going to get if you didn't decide to go to school? It's going to be a little hard, right? Don't most jobs require an education? So what kind of plan are you building if you plan not to get an education? You see my point? Or you think one day you just wake up and say, oh, I'm going to get me a wife and I'm going to have some kids and I'm going to buy a house. How much you making? What you do for a living? Well, I didn't think that out. Figure that out. Well, what did you do with the first 25 years of your life? You didn't do no thinking about the future? Uh, well, uh, yeah, okay. You see, because a lot of times people think that when you wake up this morning, you got the answer for the rest of your life. Why does that make sense? You see these guys that got on the boat with you? What is it that they missed? They got on the boat with Jesus. Jesus was sleeping. They said, uh-oh, we're going to drown. What did they miss? You all don't know? And the creator was literally this switch up. They were with them. It just so happens like they were sleeping. So they lost faith. It appeared he was sleeping. When you and I sleep, maybe we're snoring and ain't seeing nothing that's going on. <laughs> but do y'all think that Jesus would drown on a boat when it wasn't the way he was supposed to be out going out? Wasn't he supposed to die on the cross for the purpose of redemption of mankind? So if he died in the water, would man shine get uh, like where's the sacrifice? There is none. Now you don't even have to know that. If you with somebody and they performing miracles every day, you don't know that they're not the same as you. You see, a lot of people have sight, but they have no wisdom, no understanding. Now watch something. Somebody like me who goes to school forever. <laughs> that, that's why it's funny. <laughs> when I say forever, meaning, you know, forever. What do you think we think? as to why we need to go to school. You think we go on to school just to amass paperwork on the wall? What do you think our objective is by getting some additional knowledge? Yes, sir, you know the answer? My objective of doing additional knowledge is to go to school. Well, no, that's the process. I said, what is our objective? Our objective is to go to school to have more knowledge. After you got two doctorates, what would you go to school for? To work? Huh? Yeah, to gain knowledge? Absolutely. Because you, there's nobody that has all the knowledge. And for example, I'm a doctor of law. I'm a doctor of philosophy. Okay. All that means is you, you, I, I don't want to offend anybody, but doctors and lawyers practice. Philosophy talks about what happened or what's going to happen. So now, this is how this works. Let's say you want to build a building, right? Is that theoretical or practical? Did you say that? Yes. You confirm what I thought. No, no, you're right. You're right. You confirm what I thought. You look a little person, a little grown person. But here's what I'm saying. Because you can't guess that right. Mm -mm, mm -mm. You, you, you didn't even hesitate. All right, here's what I'm saying. A lot of people serve God simply for themselves. And there's nothing wrong with that. But how do you think Let me get back to the main lesson because I, I need to teach the main lesson. 
What was mankind's original sin? Oh. No, 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 no. It's a rhetorical question. What was mankind's original sin? Okay, now, what we often do is tell you it was an apple. We have to use something for you to understand that something got touched and eaten that was not supposed to. So, historically, we've made it an apple. It could have been a grape. It doesn't matter. God told man, don't touch it, don't eat it, leave it alone. Every other thing could be touched and eaten. So why is it, do you think, that mankind disobeyed God? Now, remember, God gave you everything you needed. No, 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 you know the answer, so I'm not calling on you. And that's not to be funny. You do. Okay, so now, why do you think man disobeyed God when God gave him everything he asked for? What would be the reason you would do that? Pride. Huh? Pride. Somebody say pride. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was pride. So they wanted everything? Huh? They wanted everything. Okay, here's what technically happened. Satan went through the garden asking questions of which he knew the answers. And he knew man, or in this case, woman knew the answers. And he said, could you have this? Yes. Could you have that? Yes. Could you have that? Yes. So he keeps doing that. Then he comes to the one where he know they can't have it. And he says, could you have that one? And Eve said, oh, no, God told us not to have that. And he said, uh, she said, because he said, why? He says that you're going to die. And the devil said, will you surely die? In other words. Watch the answer. He didn't say you're not going to die. He said, will you surely die? Now, it forces her to try to come up with an answer when she don't know the answer. God said, don't eat it because you're going to die. So the devil makes it seem like that might not happen. Think about when you got everything. You got everything you could need and want. Why did he try that with Adam? <laughs> That's really important. Why did he take Eve through the garden and not try that with Adam? Mm -hmm. Huh? Adam knew what he was doing. He knew the answer to the questions that Satan was asking. Close. That's not it. I know you know the answer, so I can't keep you all on it. That wouldn't make sense. Okay. You can answer. Because Adam knew what God had told him. Close. Close. Adam had a closer relationship with God. And if and if the that, devil that, came that, that part's true. And if the devil came and asked him about the tree of knowledge, he probably would have told him, no, God told me not to eat from there. He would oh, have been that's, obedient. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. But there's a reason he used it and told Eve this. And what the re what was the reason he talked to Eve, not Adam? Because uh, uh, by the way, you were right in what you said. But I want to know why he talked to Eve. Because she was evil and tempted. Yeah, but how does that how does that Get man kicked out. I already know you know the answer. I can't call on you. I want people to have a chance. She she was uh, closer to God. She had questions of. So why did he go to Eve? Yeah. If because if she didn't know how to, uh, if she knew that it was bad, and maybe if the devil tricked her to convince her to like, why can you not eat the apple? And he could bring Adam along as well. She would bring Adam along. They can, he can, she can persuade Adam. She would bring Adam along. How? So like now, it's like killing two birds with one stone. <laughs> you got them both to say. You're about to write about killing. 
Because that's exactly what happened to me. Okay, so now, why was that so important? Because usually... Because you need to use somebody sometimes, and I'm going to prove it to you. You might want to... I'm going to pick a guy. You might want to maybe not date somebody that's cool. And when I say cool, you know, your friends think think a person is cool. So you say, "Mm, there's something with him that might not seem like, you know, that'd be the right person. And your friend will say, I don't know. He looking mighty good to me. If it was me, that they say things like that. If it was me, you know, that they're talking. Uh, What would one date hurt? That's how you say it. Go to the movies, you know. But it oh the place, you know, go get one time. Now, why is it that when your friends say that, that's more persuasive than what he said? Why? Because he trusts them more. Yes. <laughs> he trusted Eve. So if I can get Eve on my corner, on my page, if I can get Eve on my side. Eve going to say, oh, I eat the apple. Look at me. Look at my eyes. My hands ain't <laughs> You see? You see? And he's sitting there looking. He's going, she not dead. She not dead. But the other problem was the covenant was not with Eve. <laughs> The covenant, you know what I mean by the covenant? It wasn't with Eve. God made Adam. And Eve was there to help him. And so what did the devil do? I'm going to get the person that's supposed to help you help me, Mr. Devil. I'm going flip to flip, flip, flip the script. Now you start to understand the devil's plan. The devil has a plan. And the plan is to turn God's people against God. So what does he do? He makes all these extra religions. (laughs) Oh, I'm a Jehovah Witness. I don't believe in Jesus. Think about something. I ain't read no book that nobody else died for the salvation and wiping away the sins of mankind. So you know what that's like? I'm going to take the shot, you know, the shot that gives you, um, that protects you from COVID. COVID. I'm going to take a shot, and, and, and it says it, it it protects you from COVID one and two and three, not number four. You know, you know COVID four, you know, the one that's going around? It don't protect you from that. Well, why are you taking that? In other words, there's a shot. No, oh, it's COVID-19, I'm sorry. It's the ones that have before 19. Yeah, like the flu shot. In other words, you're taking the flu shot to protect yourself from COVID. Because why? You go to a doctor, he said, this is a good one. I ain't got none of the 19s, but this will do it. Will that stop you from COVID-19, the other one, the flu shot? No. So why did you get it? Extra protection? You don't have no protection against against COVID-19. Do you remember when COVID-19 mutated to something different, something extra? And you had had to get more than one shot for COVID-19? Anybody else besides me had to get more than one shot? Okay, a bunch of them, right? Like maybe three? Why do we need the extra shots? I'm going to see what you say for this. Why? Need the extra shots because when you talked about COVID nineteen like mutating, I I thought like maybe it was, it was getting bigger, so so we needed um so we needed like more shots. Oh the- God, Lord! This boy, this boy is a little short. Many, many twenty one years old. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he, he he even knew what mutated was. But anyway, here's my point. Here's my point. No more for you. No more for you. Here's my point that every time God comes up 
with something. The devil is there trying to figure out how to make you do the opposite. Okay, so now let's go to the main lesson. The unbelief led to rebellion. The unbelief led to rebellion. The unbelief. I don't believe God. I'm believing the other guy who was sent there to make me get kicked out of heaven. Now, the Garden of Eden was heaven on earth. It was almost like a training ground for the big heaven. But God put you in the little heaven just to train you so that when you be put in charge of the big heaven, you, you know, it's like, it's like before people go out in the life, you know, how we let them get summer jobs and pay, buy some clothes and do some stuff. Well, that's not the same thing as what happens when you get to be 21 and you go out and get your own apartment. Right. But it's a little taste of responsibility. Does that make sense? Why do you think we do that? As parents, why do you think we give you a taste of responsibility without dumping you in the street? Just giving you a little bit of responsibility. Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. This is a question for all the people. <laughs> let them learn. I just realized I shouldn't have let you answer, Jordy Grill. <laughs> to prepare you. To prepare you. So in the preparation in the Garden of Eden, was there anything man needed that God didn't give him? Okay, but what did God require of man? Obedience. And what did the devil know that would get man kicked out of the garden? Disobedience. So notice something in life, because that's this is the story of life. A lot of people think it ain't, but it is. Is there always somebody that you know? You don't have to call no names. You don't have to identify nobody. You can just think of somebody in your head that tells you to do the opposite of what your, your family says. You want me to prove it? Now y'all happen to be women. If y'all were guys in here, I would just change it a little bit. Have you ever noticed that there's always somebody that says, oh, introduce me to your mom. You go, uh-uh. <laughs> uh-uh. <laughs> but you might not say, uh-uh. You might say, well, I'm not doing that. <laughs> because that's going to change how they, what they think of me. When I introduce you, like the next question is going to be how you know that person. Right. Am I wrong? You don't know nobody that your mama going to say, how you know him? You don't know nobody like that. Truthfully. You don't know nobody. If you introduce them to your parent, they're going to go, how you know that person? Huh? <laughs> what? Man. They got women that'll take you take you in the wrong direction. Okay, so here's my point. Have you ever noticed that those people are often giving you contrary information to what your home gives you? Have you ever thought about why that is? By the way, it happens to big people too. Have you ever thought about why that is? Let's go back to the boat for a second. What does the boat represent? What does the boat really represent in the story? See, a lot of people look at the people. What does the boat represent? Foundation. Well, why are they in the boat? They weren't going fishing. Why, why are they in the boat? Because Jesus told them to catch. Well, that's the technical reason. There was an objective to getting in the boat. They had to go somewhere. That was the main mean of, of transportation or to get to a destination. So here's the point. Look at that boat. Now, you know there's no storm every day, right? And you know there probably wasn't a storm when they first put foot in the boat, right? Anybody here ever been on a plane ride and you you take off, everything's fine, and then you get to about 30,000 feet, and all of a sudden the plane starts doing this? Yeah, and they tell you, fasten your seatbelts, the light comes on. Okay, why do you think that's happening? I mean, wasn't the, maybe it was like a, a warning that was out of their control, but once they knew about it, they just wanted to notify the passengers. Oh, very good. Very good. Like, like you said, she never can't control the weather. 
Could, it can say sunny. Because it could change any minute. The wind could change. Yeah. Or maybe there's normally gusts over this route that the pilot has to take to get to the destination. Like, for example, if you're flying from New York to Florida, there might be less gusts. But if you fly toward the Canadian border where the cold air comes in and meets the hot air, that's terrible. <laughs> So you're, where you're going, there may be no, re, no way that you don't get some. How much you get depends on how much there is. So now, if you look at this boat ride, when they got on, they didn't expect that to happen, did they? Because if they did, wouldn't they have been hesitant about going in the first place? So they get on the boat and Jesus is asleep. What does his being asleep really tell you? He wants to see like where everybody stands. Oh, no, you're correct. You, but you, you're a little too, too deep. A little too deep. Why him being asleep? What does that really mean? God bless you. What does it really mean? Why him being asleep? What does that represent? In, in terms of the, the issues that are going to come up. What does it mean if he's sleeping? No, you know the answer already. Come on, minister. Can't call it. What is it? See, the reason I'm doing this is this. We read scripture. And let me just say this. You don't know what I know by reading scripture for five, six, seven, eight times. So two things have to happen. In order to interpret it right away, God has, has to have called you to be able to do that. Now, somebody might say, really? What do you think makes some people good teachers in, in the school system and some people, you know, they could teach, but they don't produce Daniels. <laughs> You'd have to understand what that meant. 20, 2150 SAT score. Okay. Getting in any school. Might have, might have missed two on the whole SAT testing. That's a process. You got to do something to get that. And it, it means something like this. I got a B plus average. I got one B plus on my whole report card. But what do you mean I need extra help? Because you do. Why? I'm already on the high honor roll. You didn't get them all right. But Dad, nobody else does that. Doesn't matter. You're not your best. The standard is different for those of us who are called. Do you understand what I mean by that? We're in God's service. We're not in a man's service. Man's service ain't nothing compared to being in God's service. What does that really mean? Watch this. Somebody calls you up or comes to see you and asks you to interpret a problem for them. You could have all the PhDs you want, unless you got God. <laughs> Who talks to you on a on a daily basis? When they ask you the problem, immediately he knows before you even open your mouth that you need his him to intercede and come talk to you. And so, therefore, what you are able to do then is talk to him about what they talk to you about. Now, when it first started to happen like that, I said, "Why?" You see, what we don't realize is God doesn't make all people equal. You ever heard the saying, all men are created equal? All men are created. Um, let me show you how big a lie that is. All men are like Barack Obama and Martin Luther King. Not even close, right? Am I right? Not even close, right? All men ain't like Barack Obama and Martin Luther King. Both want to know where peace right. So, All men ain't like Michael Jordan. I think he got five championships. So when they say all men are created equal, is that really true? Truthfully, is it really true? How could it be true? So who said that? <laughs> the same people that said I discovered America. <laughs> With my people here already. So why is it that people lie 
about what God wants. Do you think God wants people running around killing other people from other countries? So then who thought of that and why are they doing it? Yes. Watch this. Now what? You got it. So understanding the old allows you to understand the new. Back when the Pharisee, the Pharisee, whatever their name was, the, the, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, they wanted a Messiah to come down in a chariot with um, swords and you know stuff and kill the Romans and put them in charge. That's what they wanted the Messiah to do. So when the Messiah came as a baby, he said, that ain't what I need. In other words, that's not what I need. That's not what I prayed for. That's not what I asked for. Therefore, you can't be it. That's not what I sent my order in for. Therefore, I reject what you say. Watch this. Isn't it presumptuous to, to know what God is going to do when you pray? I asked God for a pink Cadillac and he gave me a green one. Ah, that ain't God. <laughs> You gave me that boyfriend that can't even uh, uh, remember what I told him. My point is, we think that we're in charge when in reality, we're in the request line. You know, like when you were a kid and you write a letter to Santa Claus. And have you ever seen the kid that has a whole page of gifts? Like the whole page. You're now grown, so you know that an adult gets that list, correct? Uh-oh. <laughs> they're not going to buy you 14 presents and your brother one, right? Because you know on the list you made 14 for you and one for him. But you think that it's going to be the way you say it. Well, that's the same thing with God. Why would God make you an A student and your cousin, you know, she just, you, you say, you could leave her on the honor road. In other words, in other words you, you're trying to be nice. She could be on the honor roll, but put me on the high. Why do you think like that as a child? That's how children think. Why? It's me, 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 me. Yes or no? But it's okay when you're a child, correct? But is it okay as an adult to do that? So then why do people, when they pray, pray only for themselves? Is that Christianity? No, it's not. <laughs> so what causes us to be an act on Christians? Meaning if we're supposed to be Christians. What causes us to do that? Ooh. <laughs> so going back to this. The first point I was supposed to tell you about is what was the original sin? The original sin was what? Disobedience? Faith is essential. Apart from faith, we cannot be right with God. In other words, if you don't have faith in God, you can never be right with God. Now, what does that really mean? You know how you want something, but God gives you something different? Okay. Why is it we have to be okay with that? Why is it we can't go and cry like little children when we don't get what we want? And say, God, I want a tall boyfriend. And I want him to be 6'6 and muscles. And I want him to be a graduate making $100,000 a year. And you gave me a $40,000 school teacher. Uh, who's only 5'11". Because he knows what's best for you. Oh, oh. <laughs> you're not supposed you know, I know you know the answer. Why are you doing that? <laughs> you want to hear other people to see what they learn or what they need to learn. Yes. No, you just have to trust that he knows better. Let me tell you a little secret. I got to be careful because if I say too much, I'm going to get myself in trouble. It occurred to me one day 
I'm not going to tell you when. It occurred to me one day that God loved me so much, he gave me anything I asked for. <laughs> so I said, look, I've been doing this. Let me, let me ask you for what I need. And then a little angel came through the ceiling to tell me what I needed. So I said, wait a minute. Am I hallucinating? So the little angel came through one more time. And then it said, go ahead on and stab yourself to make sure you're not dreaming with a pencil. So I do that. I said, oh, ow. He said, you're not dreaming, right? Look outside. It's daytime, right? Not nighttime. I said, yeah. And he gave me an answer. Well, I tried to figure out, let me see, who's famous? J-Lo. I tried to figure out why you didn't tell me to go out with J-Lo. Who else? Who else is famous? Somebody. Congolese rap. Beyonce? Huh? Ah, Beyonce chopped liver. My choices were so much better than that. It ain't funny. But anyway. What I'm saying is this. Watch this. Watch I'm saying this. Right. I'm like, that's nice, but what about this one and that one? And so I realized later, later, that you know what you think you need. You know what you think you need. Now, let me give you an example. You know how most people like men and women based on being good looking? Okay. Based on that, let's say you have to have children. How is somebody being good looking making them a good mother or father? What does their good looking have to do with doing what they need to do to raise children? How does that matter? Do you know? Hmm? No, like uh, that's like hard, like superficial. I didn't know you could do that. That's good. I hope you do now. Got nothing to do with that. In fact, actually, it works the opposite. They're going to tell you I want to make. <laughs> I've been told that a few times. <laughs> I got them too. But, but let me say this to you. Usually, they don't want to do the small jobs because I'm wonderful. I'm, I'm a star. I'm this. I'm that. And so, therefore, they're going to delegate that to somebody like white people used to do back in the day. White people get a black person to raise their kids. The kids will turn out good. And they say, look at my little Johnny. He can play the piano. And, 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 and he went to, he's going to Harvard. Yeah, that black woman tooted his butt. And, and, and you went out to the, to, the, to the women's day meeting or the women's auxiliary. What I'm trying to say is this. We think we know better than God what we need. That's human nature. Now, I'm going to prove it to you. When, when, when Eve bit the apple, didn't God, and Adam too, didn't God already say that you will die? Do we think we know more and better than God about what we need? I'm a living witness. I thought I knew exactly what I needed, and God said, no, I love you. I'm going to help you. <laughs> you a dummy? You a big dummy? Let me help you. I'm not giving you J-Lo. You don't need her. She can't help you. So I got a real clean, beautiful, the smartest woman I ever met. Hallelujah, Jesus. And, and he let me figure it out. He let me figure it out. You know. My point is this. Why did Adam and Eve listen to a stranger and ignore? Well, <laughs> she, the devil wasn't a stranger to Eve, but that's not a, not a lesson for something with somebody like that to hear. Why? Why? Why do we listen to other people when God is telling us what to do? I think we don't know. Huh? You think we know better? It's probably right, but that I don't hear something that I think must be missing. No, I agree with what you said. I think it's like 
I'm trying to think like as being younger or so, like you would think, well, I don't see God. So kind of less in your faith. Like, since he's not here. You don't see him? No. Like, oh, it, it, he works for the most people based on feelings. Say it, but like. He, 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 he lets you feel him. His presence. That's how he comes to most people. If you decide to write his presence, it's like your prayer. But I think if you, if someone lacks the patience to wait on. Oh, then you're going to never see him. So wait, you kind of like wait on how God will work it out for them. I think it's just a lack of patience. So you're yes. right. I patience and emotions. I just listen to someone. Do you want to know the answer? Yeah, I think you just because like in this day and age, you want to think fast. Yes, we want it right now. Yeah. Now watch the people in the boat. What did they say after Jesus? Uh, do the boat screen again. Do the boat screen. Since then, are you there? Okay. Why? After Jesus calmed the, the boat down, now remember, they had been with this man for a long time. Why did they get so astounded that he could do this thing? Hadn't he done numerous miracles before? Okay. I, I, this is going to sound funny, but I got to be honest. These were some stupid disciples. <laughs> no, 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 really, really. Really, 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 really. Let, let me tell you why. Okay, watch this. Jesus is sleeping, and Jesus doesn't know what's going on. Jesus is God. Ah, oh, I know what it is. They could see him, so they smalled him out. Mm -hmm. They thought because they could see him, they said he's like us. Therefore, his power is limited. Now, What's up? I was hit by lightning at 12 years old. When I say hit by lightning, it cut, cut a 70, 60, 70 foot tree in half. I was holding on to the tree. So it knocked me back. Maybe it would be almost in the middle of the road from here. Oh. And for a day and a half, I was smoking like a piece of bacon. You know, like when you cook bacon. Oh. And so everybody said, oh, he's he not dead? But I couldn't hear nothing. That was my first experience. <laughs> what I mean by my first experience, meaning the one first experience I met when God say, I got you. In other words, cut the tree in half, cut it right in half, hit me, and the tree is that I got hit again in the house. So somebody said, Do you know? They were talking to my grandmother. Do you know the chances of that happening to somebody is like one in a million? And they said, well, if he ain't dead, that means God must have something for him to do. Okay. So I accepted that. Now, what do you think happens when he comes to you for to do something? Are well, you confused with the fact that you ain't dead, so therefore he kept you alive because he gave you stuff to do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the joke was, <laughs> the joke was, I had superpowers because lightning hit me and I was like lightning boy. You know, that was the thing. Now, I got to make sure I don't tell you too much because you ain't going to be able to handle it if I do. But here's the point. When I became a fast runner, people said I was supercharged by them lightning bolts. Call it anything you want. I don't care. But what I saw is this. God chose not to let me die, okay? That means he has a purpose for you, but he has a purpose for each and every person that he calls. You know, most times we don't want to do what God asks us to do, right? You do realize that, right? You know how crazy it is to try to preach to people when you're a kid? They don't believe you. And then guess what God does? He starts using you to do things other people can't do. Why do you think he does that? Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. I don't hear what you're saying. Why? What? Why does he do that with a kid? Why? Because he knows that 
Don't say nothing else. Don't say nothing else. Don't say nothing else. Don't say nothing else. Uh oh. Don't give me no extra work. I got plenty of work, please. I, I, I see how people used to respond to me. They used to respond to me like that. Because I would say things that there's no way I could know those things. I mean, well, days away, but most people don't understand that. So what people don't understand is God chooses different people for different tasks. Why? Why does he do that? Is he Christian? No. That's and how much like glorifying, you know, hand of girl. Yes. Like, yes. So, be more psychic, etc. And and here's the thing that people do. What we do is look for other people for um we look for other people for approval. Their approval, if it mattered. No, I'm gonna just tell you the truth. When you die, who who you think gonna be up there determining whether or not you you met God's requirements to get into heaven? People or God? Who do you think gonna be up there in heaven? Do you think other people's vote? You think it could be like the present election? You know, other people gonna vote you now. So then, do you think that what you are called to do makes a difference mm -hmm. by other people? Let me give you an example. Remember when Barack Obama ran for presidency? There never been a black president before, but there have been numerous people that ran. How many people gave him any chance to win? Real chance. Not too many. Why? Well, these are just the people don't like change. So it's like, why? Well, if there was never a black president before, that doesn't mean there was no brilliant black people, no knowledgeable, hardworking black people. But what happened is that God knows who he needs to put there, right? He had to put this with somebody beyond reproach. Now, you know how all these people that are have been president in the past are in trouble for doing different wrong things? Okay. So you don't think there was no black person that was smart enough, popular enough, but maybe there was something in their past that would pop up once they were president? <laughs> Jesse Jackson was one. I ain't going to get into what was in his past. But he was articulate. He got millions of votes. He was popular. Uh, he was a leader. But he wasn't Barack Obama, meaning Barack Obama came. He had Michelle, which was a huge asset. Okay. My point is this. God has a, a job for everybody. Jesse Jackson led different organizations and different movements in America, and that, were, that was important. Uh, Andrew Young. A uh, high-level person, uh, mayor of Atlanta. So the point is, God has jobs for everybody. But the job he gives you is never easy. And you have to determine whether or not you're going to serve God. Because it's not about serving you. It's not even about serving the people. If God chooses somebody, now think about Peter. That's why I'm bringing you to that. Think about Peter. Let me, let me come to a close. It says, faith is not simply an intellectual exercise. It has more than just biblical truth. James said that even demons know right, right theology. Faith is fluid. It's not fixed because it was strong. Yesterday doesn't mean it won't falter today. In other words, faith is not it's almost like a tire in the back of your car. You know how the tire sometimes gets flat? Even though when you go to take it out, put it on the car, you want air to be in it. You know, bad tires sometimes go flat in your car. Now, that's, that's drastic when you think, oh, I got a bad tire and it's not there. So faith is not the same all the time, 24 hours a day. What causes our faith to change and wane? I don't know. I don't know. I called on you a lot of times today. 
Mm -hmm. Not now. I'm trying to say. Yeah. What I'm trying to tell you is this: that it may seem to you like, okay, what I want to do seems hopeless. What I want to do seems impossible. What I want to do, God's not going to help me. This is what I'm telling you. Whatever you want to do, go to God. You don't need to ask 55 people and get a, a poll and a, a take a survey. But go to God in humility. That's the key. Don't go to God saying, make me, uh, you know, a Broadway movie star or, or um, I don't know. I don't know what woman can play the piano now. Good. Don't go to God for that. Because guess what? That's A, temporary, and B, it's serving ourselves. Do you follow? Now, I'll make you laugh. Usually, if you have one kid that's like all that, you're very happy as a parent. Two? Three? So one day I tried to figure out, how did God decide to bless me the way he did? And I couldn't figure it out. Nothing I, nothing I could have possibly done to merit that. So I realized what the answer was. The answer was I treated other people's kids the same way as mine. And that probably was his way of blessing me because I did that for other people's children. I officially taught for 20 years. I actually taught for 40. And what I realized was having grown up where what people sowed into your life meant so much. Because <clears throat> some of the jobs that I have, they, I didn't even see a black lawyer in my time. So when I wanted to do something and somebody said you could do it, it wasn't based on somebody down the road is doing it. You can't do that unless you have faith and God is in your life. But people can help you or hurt you. The point that I'm trying to make in closing is this. Life is a boat. We're in it whether we want to be or not. There's going to come a bit time when the boat is going to have water in it. <laughs> the storm is going to be raged. Calling your mama ain't gonna help. The only person I know to call on is God. And if you have a relationship with him, he's not never not answered my call. I don't know how he works. I just know that I trust him. If for some reason they're both supposed to sink, I'm okay with that. But I know that if I call him, he will come. The title today was Remember, you're not alone on this journey. When we die, and we're all going to die, they're going to look at your life. You're gonna, they're going to look at your life. Everything you do, having been dead more than once and getting there, seeing that that's real, I said, oh, my God, they're right now what I'm doing. Well, I better act like I got some sense. The first time I seen that, they actually write down up there what you, oh, my goodness. They say, you ain't got nothing done. They send it back. They're actually writing down what I do. Oh, my goodness. You know, that's different than, like, when you're in class and there's somebody monitoring and tell the teacher, you know, I don't know if they knew that when y'all in school, but there used to be a, a, teach, a person that wrote down what we did and give the teacher the list of who talked, who got up, who left the room, you know, that type of thing. And the teacher would deal with you based on that list. So there's somebody writing down everything we do. So since there's somebody writing down everything we do, and you know that, why would you not want to do the things you're supposed to do? And I think everybody doesn't realize that. Well, first of all, everybody doesn't die and come back. But anyway, just remember, life is a boat. You're in it whether you want to be. This is Pastor Larry McCord. Thank you for attending our services here at Newburgh. 
We appreciate your contribution and support. Please visit us here in person as well as on Zoom. May the blessings of the Lord go with you and go in peace.